Okay, question 647 of leak code, palindromic substrings. So given a string S, return the number of palindromic substrings in it. A string is a palindrome when it reads the same backwards as forwards. A string is a palindrome when it reads the same backwards as forward. A substring is a contiguous sequence of characters within the string. So within the string we have ABC, we have three palindromes. So we have one that's equal to A, B, and C. In the second example, we have a string of three A's and the output is six. So we have six palindromes, three single A's, two double A's, and one treble A. So let's discuss a potential solution for this. So just to visualize what this question is asking for, we need to loop through the entire string to see whether all the substrings within it are palindromes. So we need to look at this value, we need to look at these values, we need to look at this value, and then we also need to do the same for B. So look at B it's by itself, then BC, and then do the same for C. So we could have a brute force approach with multiple for loops that compares exactly that. So it compares this one with this one with this one, then it goes across and compares this one with this one, etc. But we have a solution which has a better time complexity, right? And that is if we start at one position and then we expand outwards. So let's say we started at this position, position A. We check to see if it's a palindrome. So we'll have some kind of function called is pal, which will take in a string or positions within the string. So it will take in left and right pointer, and then it will just check whether it's a palindrome or not. So we can see, clearly see that A is a palindrome because it reads the same forwards as it does backwards. So we'll have a count variable, which will be equal to one. And then we need to expand outwards. So right now, this string, is out of bounds. Okay, so we're expanding this way, so this is less than zero. So we need to add that into the conditional logic. So if it's less than zero, then cancel out of this loop and then move along. So we've covered A, move on to B. At B, this is a palindrome, so we can increment count to two, expand outwards. So expand outwards. We're now at point A and point C. Are these two, is this compared with this, a palindrome? Well, they're not the same, so we can cancel out of this loop now. And lastly, we reach C. Check if it's a palindrome. It is a palindrome. So we increment count to three, expand outwards. Now this is out of bounds because the right side is greater than string dot length minus one, which is this value. So we can escape this. So let's run through the second example, just to solidify the solution. We have A as our first point. So we have the left and right pointer both pointing to the value of A. Is this a palindrome? Yes, it is. So we increment count. Then we move the one pointer to the left and the one to the right. So we're now pointing to an index that is minus one. So it's out of bounds. And we're also pointing to this value. So this is out of bounds now, so we can move along. So upon reaching the second A, we can check, is that a palindrome? Yes, it is. So we can increment count and then we can expand our left and right pointer. So left goes here, right goes here. Now we check, is this a palindrome? So is the string at the left pointer equal to the string at the right pointer? Yes, it is. So we increment count again, and then we expand outwards, and now we're out of bounds. So we move along. So at the last A now, is this a palindrome? Yes, it is. So we increment count, we expand outwards. So left pointer, right pointer. The right pointer is out of bounds, so we escape that. Now, the issue we have here is that in the question, the answer for treble A is equal to six, but we have only got four, and here is why. So say we started at this pointer. So we have one value within our substring. That's this value. When we expand outwards, we now have three values within our substring. If we expand it out again, we'd have five values within our substring. So we essentially miss comparing these two and also comparing these two. So we miss all even substrings. So what we need to do, rather than just picking one to begin with, so say we have treble A, rather than just picking one as the starting point, we also need to do another run of this function that we're going to create, but have the pointers point into two strings. So we include the even length substrings. So this one, we'll look at these two. I will check to see whether they're a palindrome. They are a palindrome. So it'll increase the count to five, move outwards. We're out of bounds on the left side. So we move along. We now compare this one and this one. Are these palindrome? They are indeed. So we increment count again, and then we expand outwards. The right side is out of bound, so we can exit this and then we return six. Time complexity for this algorithm. Well, we have a string here, so we have to loop through n times. So that's going to be n. And then we need to expand on every string, which is also going to be n operations as well. So it's going to be n squared. And we need to do this for both 
odd and even substrings. So that'll be O n squared plus n squared, which again simplifies to O n squared. And then space complexity is going to be O of 1, simply because we aren't allocating any extra space here. So let's write this out. So let's declare count and set it at 0. Let's loop through the string. And just to make this a bit easier to read, let's set left equal to i and right also equal to i. So these are the left and right pointers that we're going to be throwing into our helper function. And our helper function is going to be called helper because I'm really imaginative. We pass in left and right for the odd palindromes. So this is odd. And then we also call the helper function again, we pass in left and right plus one for the even values. Then we can define the helper function. So let's create that now. Pass in left and right as parameters. And then here we need to create that palindromic condition. So it's going to be a while loop, right? Because we're going to have to loop through this substring. We need to state that left needs to be greater than or equal to zero. So it needs to be inbound. Right is less than or equal to s dot length minus one. So right needs to be inbound on the right side. And s at left needs to be equal to s at right. So it needs to be a palindrome. If that is the case and all of that has passed, we can increment count. We can decrement left because we're expanding outwards from the center and we can increment right. And finally, we can return count. So let's just run this and see if it's work. Okay, let's submit it. And there you have it. 